All right, so here, now we have someone, I can't tell who it looks like, RM maybe. It's RM and Jungkook. Oh, okay, there's Jungkook too. And I, uh, when I saw this, this frame, I remember that part of Damien when Sinclair and Historios were at Historios house. And, and they were reading books and looking at a flame, but there, this is not flame, this is green smoke. It's just that this, the, this image was, to me, was very similar to that moment. Then Sinclair goes away. He goes away to war, right? He goes away from, from Storia's house. I don't think they have, I, I don't remember if they have a disagreement about something they were talking about. Because this, uh, the Wings Era and this music video is inspired by Damien. And uh, uh, actually, I think that Yungi is uh, more associated with Historios. I don't know if that's the right way to say the name of the the character. Yeah, I I don't recall offhand. I've read somewhere I don't remember where that this uh, uh, Storios was uh, like a, a representation of Jung in Damien. Could have been. I don't know. Uh, yeah, could have been. I don't remember the, the where I the source where I read the, this. But yeah. that, that this is uh, the in the book. This is I think this is a moment where Pistorius tells Sinclair about the collective unconscious. I'm not sure. All disappeared and new. Uh, uh, I don't. I, I won't be able to tell it though. One of the things I would observe about Damien was that it, it was immediately, it's covering a time frame that's immediately pre-World War I. Yes. And so you have the combination of forces going on where these young men are going through their normal growth periods and, and the steps that you go through to become a, a young man and around them in Damien and around them, the world is getting ready to explode into a war with poison gas. And, mm -hmm. and so this may be a reference to that yes. with, with the green smoke, right? Because okay. one of these guys, I guess it's, is it, uh, Pistorius is the older man that go that goes away, right? Ultimately, and in the end, Pistorius is the one that plays organ at the church. Who's playing the organ? Is playing Pistorius the is the yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. right. He studied, okay. I I think he studies theology. I'm not sure. That's right, but he he ends up going away and and going into the army. Young men have been sacrifice to war for millennia, right? And one of the things about growing up is you're going, you know, you're sort of overwhelmed by having been drunk and all these other things that happen when you're growing up and becoming a man. And then all of a sudden, oh, by the way, you're, you're off to war. And that actually happened to me too. And my friend, I mean, it's very, it, it's very parallel to my life where uh, my friend who was my roommate in the basic school was killed and I survived and went on and now I'm talking about it. So he, his spirit is still with us even today as I talk about it. But anyway. Yes. The military service is something that to, to Korean young men right are facing yes, yes right and they're facing and and it's very real for them because mm -hmm. if our madman president and the madman president of north korea yeah. cook up a war it's them that's going to be dropped into it unfortunately yeah that's the scary thing 
And so this is sort of a collective unconscious realization of something that's coming, which happened in Jung's life too, where he had, I think, three dreams and two visions or vice versa, where he, those were her, his first experiences of the collective unconscious because he actually had prefiguration of World War I. Something like this. I mean, it, you know, it's something like imagining the imagining the poison gas of World War One. Well, Jung had that happen to him, and that's what that's covered in the Red Book, which is over my shoulder here. From the collective unconscious, we can have these things. And what Jung said about it was later on in 2014, or I'm sorry, 1914. At the end of July, he was in Aberdeen, Scotland, giving a talk, and he was 39 years old at that time, but he'd had these five dreams and visions, and so he didn't know whether he was going crazy because there were so many crazy dreams and visions, and then when World War I finally broke out on August 1st, he said he was the happiest man in the world because then he knew he wasn't crazy. Yeah, he feared he had schizophrenia. I, I think I have I read this part. Yeah, he knew he knew he wasn't he didn't have schizophrenia because it was actually a prefiguration of something that was actually in the collective unconscious. Yeah. People were all worried about it. Maybe they weren't talking about it, but they were worried about it. So here the guys are still trying to get away. Okay, so here you want to comment on this? Yes, you see that the the the, the ceiling and the floor is has a, a glass, mm -hmm. and uh, it it's not the first. Uh, yes, I don't know. Maybe the first because this one is before fake love, and they have this this camera work of going from one floor to another. Uh -huh. Maybe it has a meaning, and the transparent floor. Okay, so they in this case they went up, so they're going up to a more spiritual realm. Their realm, they're almost sitting down as one might do in meditation, and we see the fellow on the right is uh, putting on a blindfold. If I'm not mistaken, isn't that what happens next year? Yeah. Yeah. The so, central door there, always yep, there. There's the central door. That would be the central door into life. So here we're in an unconscious space, but you're going blindly, you're getting ready to go blindly into life. And here is an apple, which is a red apple, which is indicative of life in the real world too. Mm. Okay, so boom, there you are. This one is the, the painting, The Fall of Icarus, and Fei Young is about all. this painting in the wall yes. is the fall of Icarus and the one is the lament, the lament for Icarus oh, okay so this is this painting is the fall of Icarus and, it, and it's on the wall is that right yes, of this, yes I think it's do you know where this museum is that they're in no the actual, the actual museum it's quite an impressive place okay and so now we're in a now we're in an unconscious space. Something's going on. Yes, it is purple. Yeah. And we see different aspects of the self going through, sometimes very vague like this, in very vague and in colors, and, and then sometimes in actuality. Here we have the, I don't know who this is, but he's... Very hope. Jeho, who who is, you know, acting out about maybe about what's depicted in this picture. But again, we're in these sort of floating gauzy kind of period, and then he says, "Okay, kill me gently, oh boy." Now there is no swing. He's really floating, really. Yeah, he was Not really. He, Okay, so there's no swing under him, and yeah. he's just, his spirit is floating up into the 
ether here. Okay. And here, RM, there's a suggestion that he might have been smoking some, some good stuff here. <laughs> and you're sort of blindfolded going into, into life. Can't even run away anymore. When you're growing up and suddenly you realize, oh, by, by the way, you're going to have to live a life. And it's whatever life you were given. Right. And so, you know, I think the thing that I like to say to young people is that, you know, you're already a winner of a lottery. Okay. A huge lottery because each ejaculation of sperm produces millions of sperm, but only one gets to fertilize the egg. So, so you are the result of that huge lottery just in your mother and father and in their genes. But that lottery goes back multiple times back to the beginning of, of life, not, not to the beginning of humans. But our grandparents were also single-celled organisms at one point. And so we were all just very lucky to be born. Okay, everybody, everybody is like that. And so we didn't really get to choose where we were born, whether you were born in Brazil or I was born in Mississippi, <laughs> which is what I was, and uh, whether we were man or woman or whether we were Saudi Arabian, somebody could be born there, or Palestinian or Israeli or Korean. Okay, so you're here, they're born as Korean young men. And as you say, they're facing draft and they're facing a very tense political situation still. It reminds me of my time in the 1960s when I was facing a very similar situation. He's blindfolded. To tied uh, tied to the door, and yeah. he's going the minute, let's go back to the me. opposite side of the door. Right, right. So he's his eyes are hidden from the reality of what's next, in a way, mm -hmm. because that's going to open out to him at some point, maybe. And he's just struggling against being an adult, maybe. That's. That's kind of what I envision uh, here. At this point, uh, Ram reads a uh, passage from Damien. There was a scene in Damien with a balloon like that? No. Uh, at this point of the music video, uh, Ram reads a part of Damien. Oh, uh, I quote. Okay, so RM reads a part of Damien at this point. Yes. Okay. And is that part of the lyric? No, it's a, uh, uh, this is a, how can I say, a pause where oh, pause. the music stops and, uh, and he reads that quote from Damien. I think okay. it's about shaking hands with the devil. Okay. And, and then uh, Shuga appears playing the organ. It's right. a reference to Pistorius. And the song he plays is the same that Pistorius plays in Damien. I see. Okay. All right. Okay, so so they, here they are going through that door they, right. that was behind them. Right. Out into life, out into the brightness of life. Yes. Between good and evil. <laughs> yes. Down the middle. And well, the young see see that says that Jean hesitates to go. Yeah. And here here the veil is being lifted. Yes. They uncovers his eyes and Jean sees that uh -huh. angel. Right. Okay, so this is the dark angel here. Let me try again. That's hard to capture. Yes. I'm just trying to catch that one frame. <laughs> I do the same when I'm trying to. Mm -hmm. Ah, can't do it. Okay, but there was an angel with black wings, so it's it's a fallen angel. 
Yes. And you, the, the first painting that appears is about the fallen, the fallen angel. Okay, here it angels. is. And now there is a mirror in the place that that painting. That All painting right, has. okay, so over here, you're, you're seeing my cursor here? Yes. Okay, so it's, so it's over there. There's the mirror behind him. So there's a mirror there, and here's the fallen angel with the dark yes. wings. And the light inside those those doors are now on. Yeah. There's light inside. Them. Oh yeah. The the these doors on the on the left and right especially are very bright now. Yes. Thinking about being a fallen angel. <laughs> yes. That kiss. Uh, I remember that last scene from Damien, the last part from Damien, where Damien gives Sinclair the kiss of Eva, his mother. Do you remember? I don't remember. Maybe there is a connection with this. Yeah, there might be a connection with that. Obviously, oh, no. obviously, when you're kissing a fallen angel, and I guess every mother, in a sense, is a fallen angel. It's a recognition that you're going to go into life with both good and bad things around you, and and you're ready for that. Or most people aren't ready for it, but anyway, it's coming, ready or not. <laughs> <laughs> ready or not, yes. Yeah. And I think it's interesting that now the the there is Seiyang with his wings removed. Yes. Lost. Yeah. And I think it's interesting that there is a mirror in the place that where there was that painting about the fallen angels. Yes. Uh, okay, and, and this, the angel this is tears crack. of painting. Yep, green green tears. Yes. And it's getting, so these issues are getting put and on the, them. Go ahead. And the Nietzsche quote from Zarathustra, that's why I thought... Okay, so that's, you're saying that that quote is from Nietzsche? Yes, okay. from Zarathustra. Yeah, uh, yeah, and that's what I why I thought that there is not only Damien in this music video in the Wings era, mm -hmm. because uh, uh, Nietzsche is very present in Damien. Many mm -hmm. times they mention Nietzsche in many of his works, but not this is this specific one. Yeah, and I found uh, the reference to this one in the Red Book. Mm -hmm. Not in them. So that's when I saw that it was not only Damien that is about Jung. Right. <laughs> right. So and we, see, uh, and we saw that reference to the Red Book in the next era, the Love Yourself, Love Yourself era. Yeah. Uh -huh. let, let me, I, I just want to uh, see if I can do a translation of that. I think I have the translation. Do you have the translation? I found here that it means one must have chaos within oneself to give yeah. birth to a dancing star. Ah, yeah. Okay, that's right. One must have chaos within oneself in order to give birth to a dancing star. That's a very important quote from Nietzsche <laughs> and from Jung, too. But I, that's definitely a Nietzsche quote, that's for sure. Okay, and then the the angel mother sort of collapses on us. Yes. And, and the reflection of the flowers. Is different color and it's different from what Different the flowers. Yeah. One is so the, the outside world, the real world, which is the one 
with his back to us is different from the reflected unconscious world, which is the other, other one here. Yes. Okay. And finally, his face. His face is just. Correct. Instead of a tear. Yeah. Wait a minute. Let's go back here. Okay, so it's actually cracking, and he's realizing that life is going to be tough, I guess. <laughs> yes. yes, and I, I, and I found some similarities, probably uh, some references to that film, Black Swan. Black Swan. Oh, yes, the poster is the face of uh, Natalie Portman's face. Mm -hmm with a similar crack hmm. and the uh, there is a sculpture with uh, something a human figure with wings too hmm. i think a long time that i saw that film the the story told in the film is about uh, someone who's is struggling with mental health mm -hmm. The pressure she is in. Sure. Yeah, we all struggle with mental health, obviously. Now, let me just see. I don't know. Do you feel like we've done anything here? I'm, I'm just curious. Yes, I do. I'm just, uh, I'm just worried if I was able to express myself in English in a way that someone can understand anything. Oh, I think they can. I, I definitely can. Here are some notes that I took. I'm not sure. You know, obviously, I thought the two doors was an important reference because it's, it's a reference to choices of good and evil, for example, mm -hmm. and, but also choices between masculine and feminine. It was interesting that the there were female hands that came in to cover his eyes, wasn't it? In that, I don't know. Okay. Maybe other hands. I don't know. There was something here about it was pointing to the index finger. As I said, the right hand pointing to the index finger, the left hand pointing to a wholeness. Let me share again here so that you can see, because maybe I can, maybe you would have some comment on this. So here it is again. And so somewhere in here, there's, their hands are come up. Okay, so here we have a right hand is pointing with its index finger on to the lapis. Okay, so so this lapis is a reference to uh, really depth, the, the, the depth part of yourself. It's also the divine child. Okay, mm -hmm. so that, that's one thing. And then on the other hand, there's another hand, probably from another person, but here is another ring that's a mandala, and it's, mm -hmm. so it's an image of wholeness. So, and also just the five hands together would be an image of wholeness. Right, mm -hmm. yeah, and it just it's a kind of mandala just with the, all the different hands in there. So here they're pointing to alchemy, which is, uh, in fact, both of them are kind of pointing to alchemy. But the lapis is really the lapis philosophorum, which is the deepest part of the unconscious, and so that's indicated by this, and then wholeness with the left hand, which would come from the right brain. Okay, so that's the other point. So the right hand comes from the left brain, okay, which means from rationality. True. And so, so the rational part is pointing to making something very hard and very rational. The left hand comes from the right brain, is operated by the right brain. And so the right brain is 
always pointing, it's irrational, and it's always pointing toward wholeness. So it's trying to fill in the blanks. And so this is one of the issues that I get into with the uh, with the religious guys who want to keep everything in the logos because the logos, if it's all rational, then it's very hard, but it's not necessarily whole. And what happens with the irrational is it fills in the parts of the logos that are incomplete. And, you know, I really saw that uh, this week. I was hearing these uh, American prelates or theologians talk about the logos and they're specifically talking about the book of John and chapter one of the book of Job, or I'm sorry, the book of John, chapter one of the book of John, in which in verse one, it says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Okay, so that's where the logos comes from because logos means word. But then... Uh, they have simply ignored everything that comes after, which is they've ignored life because in the third verse, it says all things came to be through him and without him, nothing came to be. What came to be through him was life. Okay, and that's the, that's the irrational side. And this life was the light of the human race. Okay, and so when when you say everything is about the word and this very solid stone of the idea, it doesn't put, let any life in. And so, so this passage in the book of John from uh, verse one to verse 13 really talks about putting life into the word. <laughs> In the beginning was the word, but the word wasn't the only thing. Okay, so that's my little homily. But I was referring to the devil angel behind the doors and uh, the bird and the devil's wings, which we talked about, bittersweet, which you and I were talking in the advanced group about about bitter and sweet and, and salt, right? And yeah. And so... When we have, in life, we need salt for everything in life. We can't live without salt. And, and so when something bitter happens, which again refers back to this little bit about pain that I read earlier, when something bitter happens and painful happens, it brings more consciousness, which brings more wisdom. Okay, so there, there's this scene, and, and what it's exemplifying is the duality, the light and the dark. And, mm -hmm. and it even says, and I can't even feel the pain anymore because there's so much pain involved in coming to consciousness, right? At 225, they're talking about more, 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 which to me is also a, re a reference to money, money, money. In fact, they, they're actually singing money, money, money although the uh, closed captioning there says more, 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 more. No, it's more in Korean. It's more in Korean? Yes. Okay. But the way they're, so the words, the word money yes. that they're singing, I think the, they're saying it sounds like money, 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 right? Yes, there are so many American so many, I think, two American songs that have this, this line. Right. Referring to money. Right. And, and, and so what I was thinking of was that it was uh, a reference to uh, materialism. And then I, I had pulled out before the red sky and the arrow thing that we talked about. And hold tight so I can't come to my senses. This is about growing up. And then we talked about the grail being poisoned because the grail is us. And, you know, we're the holy grail. And it gets poisoned because it's not, it's not perfect. And I also noted the confusion of youth, the blindfold, the evil world wanted nothing more to do. They didn't want anything more to do with the evil world. And so he has the 
he loses the, the black wings, but then he's just shattered. And I, I think that basically what we're talking about in this video is, you know, this hard transition that young people have uh, coming from, coming literally from heaven, from the, you know, from the time our self starts to be created in our mother's womb, we're taking everything from the chaos of matter turning into spirit, and that's quite chaotic. And so it's also very painful. And as we start to experience it, that at birth, it gets more and more painful, especially through teenage years, okay, or through the time that these guys are in, where they're really not very happy about what's going on in life. I think th that's what this image says to me. I mean, there's pain, there's, okay, maybe it's okay on the right, but, and maybe I'm going to make something of it, but it's not going to be what you guys think it's going to be type thing. I mean, I'm, I'm reading their faces and reading a lot of different motions here as these young men are learning about life. That's the way I'm taking it. I and so blood. Too. I see anger too. Anger, yes, definitely anger. And so I, I think that it's, it, the point is that as we learn to be human beings from the time of birth, things aren't as perfect as we think they're gonna be when we're a little baby. Okay, when we're a little baby, uh, we get everything we want. If we want food, we just scream bloody murder and mom comes and brings milk. And if we want to be cleaned up, we scream bloody murder and mom comes and puts new diapers on type thing. And, and so we're the boss. We get to create everything the way we want it. But then as we get older, we start to feel the pain of getting trained to use the toilet properly, for example. And that's a, a new kind of consciousness, and, and we typically don't like it very much. <laughs> where, is, where is the agreement co uh, contract that I don't remember signing? That's right. <laughs> the agreement to life. Yeah, that's right. We didn't sign that contract. And I mean, I just remember. Um, was this included? Yeah. Right when I was this age, the age of these guys, all of my friends had motorcycles. We were living in Japan and we could not drive in Japan until we were 18 and we weren't 18, but we were allowed to have motorcycles, uh, very small ones, 50 cc ones. And so all of my friends had motorcycles and I, at one point, you know, made a big stink with my father about giving me a motorcycle so I could travel around with my friends and he absolutely refused to do it. And then I left Japan an, a year before my parents did. And so they stayed there with my brother and my brother, as soon as I left Japan, within three weeks, my mother bought a motorcycle for him. And I was furious. I said, whoa, wow. Yeah. But then uh, later on, and that, that happened when I was, 18, 17, 18, right? But then when I was 28 and I was practicing law, my neighbor across the street had a motorcycle. He had a wife and two children, but he killed himself on his motorcycle. So then I saw the wisdom in my father's position, having to accept those uh, difficult times of life and difficult experiences is, is hard to take on. So I guess... Is this your interpretation of the video also? I mean, that it's about, it's about coming of age, and I guess Damien is a coming of age novel, isn't it? Yes, so. yes. Any, anything else that you wanted to talk about here? Only that uh, many of the things that we saw in Blood, Sweat, and Tears mm -hmm. appears in other music videos, uh -huh. and I will try to show them to you okay great to see what you can see from them all right what i take from this is that the 
the fundamental story is a story of all of us, basically, yes. and growing up and growing through the stages of life. And, and I believe that if they keep it up, like they are doing so far, they can create an, a very, very impressive body of work that helps people understand what it is that they're going through at the various stages of life. And so here, obviously, they're still very young and they're just experiencing, well, they're experiencing pain for the first time. Obviously, that's what spring day was about. They're experiencing being seduced by uh, demon drum, <laughs> demon run. Uh, they, they're experiencing being seduced by demon rum and uh, by a woman and how that is in a way imprisoning, but at the same time, that's what you have to do if you're going to have a life and you're going you're gonna to make your contribution to life. So anyway. And there is another thing in there, in there i don't know who wrote the book the notes one in the story and also in the webtoon save me mm -hmm. there is a lot about trauma uh -huh. at a young age okay well, and i some very <laughs> heavy things that i think that may i don't know give uh, uh how can I say? When something, when something yeah. that you uh, makes reference to, because trauma is obviously a very uh, big topic. It's a topic that it is huge in mental health, obviously. And as I've been reading this book, and I think that this book is really brilliant, "Trauma and the Soul" by Donald Kalshid, and here in this image that's on the cover of it, it shows the dark angel, the devil, uh, here trying to steal your life from you, okay, because it, it can pull you away. And I, I was just, and on the other hand, the good angel takes the divine child and protects it. So it's very interesting because then that, that same author has done a couple of videos where he is uh, he's taken other fairy tales and shown how they represent the the dark angel and the light angel and how the we have a self curing system or a self protection system that's in our unconscious that's this light angel that tries to protect us, but it's also, in a way, evil. It can be, it, it can be both good and bad. So that it's a very interesting topic. It's worth finding some of those videos on YouTube. There um, is a lot of, in the BTS material, on trauma. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm, I'm glad I'm reading it because actually I'm reading, realizing how much trauma I, I've actually had. It, you know, didn't really, I didn't really think of it consciously as trauma at the time, but as I look back on it and look at what he's saying about trauma, then I say, oh yeah, that is pretty traumatic. So let's talk again. All right.